It's the final week of the NFL season, and if you're still playing fantasy football, that means you're playing for a championship, and there is probably no more important show than the one you're about to watch of all time. We're going to get into what teams are playing for, who might bench their starters uh, in this important week, who might bench the guys dealing with some nagging injuries, and we're going to also talk about all the waivers, the guys you need to pick up, and what transactions you need to watch for this week. We're going to help you get a get a championship. The only way you don't get a championship this week, I'm calling it now, is if you play against someone else watching this show, baby. Enjoy the show, like, subscribe, and let's get that hashtag Foot Clan title. Today's show is sponsored by Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. Regular use of Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology provides a continuous invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness, renewing your protection with every wash. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology available at walmart.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and of course, champions. Oh, champions. Fantasy football champions. Hashtag Bookland champions. Mm. Welcome to the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, just in case you are nasty. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I know we celebrated a little bit yesterday, but... It's official now. Today, you can log into your platform, the confetti will be dropping from the sky. Ooh, I haven't done that yet. Well, there's certain places where I've seen that. Oh. And I'm just saying, like, you can go in and you have officially won. Maybe. Oh, Maybe. Yeah. We have a tale to tell here at the top of the show. But welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. I'm your host while Andy is away. Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right? Joined by my best friend, Jason Moore. We're best friends We're best just today. friends just um, for this Show. episode <laughs> uh andy will be back at the end of the week to help us with the week 18 matchups in the meantime we've got a cardboard bear cardboard bear extraordinaire jay grizz <laughs> holding it down over there eating his salmon doing bear stuff what do they do other i here's two things hibernate I that's it that was the other thing which hibernate and eat salmon which i have now uh and love honey or is that just winnie the pooh i think all bears do but i don't know yeah. uh but apparently, a bear hibernation is not just a, they're a, they go to sleep and then they wake up and it's spring. Like, it's just a real sleepy time in general, but they will occasionally get up and go do stuff. I learned that this last year as well. It's very disappointing. Yeah. Like, I thought that a bear would just go to sleep for months. I wanted it to be cryogenic sleep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, bears can live longer because they, they pause they, their life. Right. They shut the heart rate down. To 2 BPM, just enough to stay alive. Boop. Boop. <laughs> Boop. But anyways, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it was a wild Monday game. We will break that down. It was a boring Monday game. Well, it was wild at the end, I should say. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, but first, the Megalo Bowl winner shout out. Oh, yeah. D give, me the, uh, give me the Jared it's Goff horn. Is that somewhere in here? Thank you. Not that you are Jared Goff. We don't ever want to put that onto anybody in this dojo. But Cooper Cup of Coffee with, that's the team name, the username, Golden Boy TDX, 191.3 points, takes down the Megalobowl. Congratulations. You will be playing in the Listener League with us this next year. Yes, you will. And, and we can say you are officially the first one because... Our Listener League Championship, it went down last night. Joseph Mason, Derek Logan, Joe had Deontay Johnson, was down. He needed about 12.9 yeah. points. So Deontay Johnson, you know, a pretty quick touchdown, some receptions, not a ton of yards, but closing in. Then in the third quarter, Deontay catches a pass. Joe goes up by .2 points. We're all congratulating uh, uh, Mr. Mason here on, on the win. And it's like, well, if he fumbles, and we're like, yeah, 
if he fumbles and then doesn't catch a pass for the rest of the game. There's nine minutes left in the third quarter. Finishes the entire game he did having that. won by 0 0.2 points, which, of course, Derek Logan has sifted through box scores and looked for some way to have a stat correction, and he has found a credited forced fumble for the Chicago Bears that he thinks is egregious and not real, and so it is being investigated. So who knows? Yeah. Maybe it's Derek Logan. Maybe it's Joseph Mason. But as of right now, congratulations – Congratulations to <laughs> Joseph Mason. Uh, if you want to watch the show, the show youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers, remember, we don't go away. We're here for the rest of the week, five shows this week. Then we drop into the extended bye, two shows a week. We're going to be looking at the truth of these players. Did they actually help you or did they just finish high in the rankings? The Footy Awards, the greatest award show known to mankind. Big take, all humans, big takeaways and things that we want to um, not forget that we lessons learned. We've got all sorts of important shows coming up and also not only are they important, but they're a lot of fun. Yeah, tons of fun. And then we, of course, will be slipping into our dynasty pants as we are looking at the rookies, looking at some dynasty football stuff. So stick with us. Subscribe on YouTube, wherever you listen to your podcast. All right. Monday night, Jason, you you were poo-pooing the game. Yeah, the floor I mean, is yours. There were two cool things that happened in this game. One was big Ben Roethlisberger and the emotion and the playing for his last game at home. And the second was the crazy, insane for fantasy football, week 16, last game, last essentially play week of 17. the game. Y yes, the I'm used to week 16, yeah, I know, championship I know. week. Um, the Najee Harris touchdown. Many people had turned the game off. I... In fact, I'm guilty. Uh, the game sucked, and then uh, the kids were being a little rambunctious, had to get the, the game off, and I missed it. And so many – I mean, easily the most fantasy-relevant player in these games, uh, in this game between these two teams. You had, you had Chubb, you have Deontay Johnson, but the one that is really been the most impactful player this season, Najee Harris, in the championship game, and so many people needed something big and they got it at the last second. I will never forget Allen Robinson in Week 16 streaking down the sideline for a bomb touchdown to give me my first League of Record title, and so many people will remember this as such an incredibly great moment or a horrific nightmare. Sure. Um, and then there are, I mean, I've, I've seen so many stories. Uh, thank you all, Foot Clay. There are thousands, literally thousands of pictures of, I got the championship, I, I won, hashtag Foot Clay title. Like we got a, a story here from Scott Mervis, started 0-4, got into the championship after winning 13 games in a row, was down 13 against uh, in a game against Nick Chubb. Najee on the last oh, drive wins the championship. Dude, awesome. Amazing. Unbelievable. There are so many stories, but I've, I've also seen – I mean, there's just – there's so many different people that the stories never stop. I saw one where um, the Najee touchdown brought the team that lost the championship all the way up to like 0 0.3 points. They, are you talking about the, the story here from Jordan Lawson? I have the Browns defense went down by point four after the Najee touchdown, but then Big Ben taking the knee put Pittsburgh at 299 yards, which transferred the W back. Oh man, what an emotional <laughs> roller coaster! And that's what I so you know I love oh, that there was this man. big walk off play. I really love it because fantasy football is awful and awesome. It is love and hate. It's tons of emotions because you you. I mean, that's why we're playing. Uh, and, and yes, it's devastating to lose. But also, if it's not devastating to lose, then it's not really it's exciting not fun to, win. to win. Exactly. Um, and so the fact that there was an insane, crazy last-second play that really turned the tide is just such a great way to go out on the season. I hope it was good for you. Um, other takeaways from the game for fantasy purposes looking forward, Baker Mayfield sucks at football. Um, oh, no, no, no. He's hurt. I get it. He said after the game he's going to have surgery. He admitted he's not even sure he's going to play the last week of the season. Um, he probably should not. And they were making a lot of it on the on the broadcast of um, the, the Browns went insanely pass heavy. Like Baker Mayfield threw the ball 38 times uh, in a game 
that was very close the entire time. Nick Chubb only carried the ball 12 times for 58 yards. So if, if you had Nick Chubb last night, it was pretty much a bust. But I was watching the game going, yes, this actually, this is exactly what the Cleveland Browns need to be doing right now. They're done. They're not going to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You need to – this is a heat check. Like, is Baker Mayfield the guy or not? Let's put a game plan out here together. You're against your division rival. Can you, Baker Mayfield, single-handedly beat the Pittsburgh Steelers? Nope. And the answer was at least not this version <laughs> of Baker Mayfield. He failed miserably. 38 passing attempts, 185 yards, two interceptions, uh, two touchdowns, but one of them was, you know, the, the end of the game garbage touchdown, you know, against a different defense. And, look, I get the fact that he is playing with an injured shoulder, but that right. does not make your reads bad. That doesn't make you – the injured left shoulder doesn't make you throw to the guy covered instead of the guy streaking wide open. Like, that's – the surgery ain't helping, Baker. Um, so. What? The Borgogans hitting me with a stat here. Is this true? It, well, it better be true, but either way, it's awesome. It's about to make it on the highest sports fantasy yeah. podcast of all time. This better be true. Uh, Baker Mayfield became the first player in the NFL this season to throw 10 straight incompletions in a game. I mean, Carson Wentz was almost there if you were following that uh, the Colts game of this past weekend. And then kind of the, the final thing I'll say here uh, on Big Ben's career, like he's going, he'll go immediately into the Hall of Fame. And I get it. It's the final home game. Um, so at the end of the, of the game, it's a really big deal. He got to take the knee. The, the crowd uh, you know, cheered for their quarterback who's been there for almost two decades. Photographers, I understand it's your job to get the photo, uh, like that, the photo of the moment. That moment, and maybe I sound like a curmudgeon old man right now, I do not care. That moment of this is Big Ben's moment on the television in primetime was completely destroyed for me because he is swarmed. He is just being followed by 50 different photographers who are giving him not even six inches of space around him to walk. It was the most distracting thing. Like, the crowd couldn't see Big Ben. I couldn't see Big Ben on the television screen because he's just being mobbed by the paparazzi. They needed to have a plan. See, I think I think that added to it. You're, you're there was way at, too many. That's way the, too many. It was the Big Ben crowd. It was, the, it was like, like the big... I mean, look, they call him Big Ben, so I you figure the, the whole where he's moving should be a big wave of people. <laughs> he's trying to take a lap at the end of the game to, to high-five all the fans at the front, and he can barely do it without, trying, without running over a photographer. NFL, get this figured out because it was ridiculous. Ridiculous. All right, I think that covers this game well enough. There's not many takeaways. The passing games aren't working. Big Ben's going to go away. and But um, also, a Big Ben throwing the ball 46 times for uh, 46 attempts, turning into 123 passing yards. I mean, that's just impressive. That's really impressive stuff there. All right, let's move on. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Presented by Traeger Grills. All right, where there's smoke, there's fire, week 18 edition. And these are the two players that you degenerates deserve. Mm -hmm. If you're out here doing your title game in the final week of the season, this is who you get. This is who we talk about. Number one, Braxton Berrios from the New York Jets. He is on a heater. Uh, wide receiver 20 against Miami, 23 against Jacksonville. And then torched the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Eight for 65 with a tutty. Uh, he had a rushing touchdown as well. He targeted on 32% of his routes over the last four weeks, and that's like an outrageously good number. And if, if, you, if you're not listening, uh, percentage of routes, targeting on percentage of routes, that is a very sticky yes, stat. That means you're good. That means that the quarterback, when you are on the field, is in fact looking for you. Brax, and it's... This is a definitely a, a three-game streak of technically NBA GM rules say that he is on fire. But three weeks ago, just to to clarify here, okay, three weeks ago, sure. he had one target in the game for one reception for 26 yards. He happened to have 
Um, another rushing touchdown with 10 yards. It was not a very – he scored 10 fantasy points, was on the field 27%, had one target. He just happened to – it was like a, a tight end line of one for one for one. He fell into the end zone, got into the top 20. But the last two weeks have been impressive. So the question, is this smoke or is this fire? Is this just uh, – is this something that's going to stay or not? Now I he, have a definite answer. He is taking on Buffalo the next this next week. The question – is the opportunity because he he had this opportunity where uh, Berrios the last two weeks has been on the field over 80% of the time, which that's not been his role. He's been like a 30% snap share guy. Mm -hmm. But it came down to Jamison Crowder was out and Elijah Moore was out. Now, Elijah Moore is part of the future of this team. He is, in fact, he's the future of the wide receiver core for the Jets. Jamison Crowder is not. Even if Jamison Crowder is available to play against Buffalo in the final week of the season, do they play him or do they do a heat their own heat check and see is Braxton Berrios somebody that is going to be a part of this team for the long run? So, Jason, you have a definitive answer. We'll let you go first. Uh, the The answer is essentially if he is in the, if he has the opportunity, he's on fire. You said it, where which is. The snap percentages look from the bye week in the middle, early in the season, week six. His snaps are nine percent, twenty four, twenty one, twenty nine, nineteen, nineteen. You get it, like yeah, he's, he's not, not on the field. But the last two weeks, eighty three and eighty seven percent, and he's done great with it. He's got a good sync with, uh, you know, with Zach Wilson. So this is fire. This is something that they're going to continue on. The matchup is not great against Buffalo, but. The matchups aren't really, you know, when you're talking about the the slot guy, the the Wes Welker, Julian Edelman type that's just going to beat someone in short space, Cole Beasley type, um, you're, you know, that's, they're still going to get theirs. And so I like in a full PPR, I like Braxton Berrios going forward. Now, if it turns out that Sunday morning, Elijah Moore and uh, Crowder. You know, Crowder are both active then I would pull him out of my lineup. I would pull him – because there's a chance he doesn't play ahead of Crowder. Um, I don't think that they are – I think they're going to give Braxton Berrios the chance. And I, I watched an interview with him um, where he was kind of talking about just the, the mind meld and the sync that he's got uh, with Zach Wilson, making sure he's in the right spot at the right time, that he could trust him. And that that's appeared there. So, yeah, I mean, if I'm the coaching staff – with what he's done the last two weeks, you got to give him the opportunity. I agree. This comes down to Jamison Crowder. If Crowder is inactive, I think that Berrios is a a flex type of a player. So I will say it's a conditional fire. Yeah, condition is it your conditional? Yeah, it's it's on a timer. <laughs> Next for you degenerates, Dare Agumbawale, Jacksonville Jaguars current starting running back. Uh, the RB14 against the New York Jets after the catastrophic injury to uh, James Robinson, who tore his Achilles right at the beginning of that game. Granted, the Jets, everyone can run on the Jets. We know that. But still, Dari came through. Then the next week against the New England Patriots, he was the running back 20. The snap share went down as expected. The opportunity share went down. It was really only 11 opportunities against the Patriots. However, he did score through the air. Now... It's important to know how this happened. Yeah, okay. Take us through it. Here was his stat line. He was nine attempts on the ground for 36 total yards. And then through the air, he was one for four. Um, and then at the end of the game, the very, very end, we were talking garbage of the garbagiest, right? Because the game finished with the touchdown 50 to 10. So what does that mean? It was 50 to three, three. or something like that? He got a 28-yard receiving touchdown. What's funny is I was kind of down on Dare for this week because of the matchup against the Patriots, sure. and I felt great about my call the whole game. I'm like, see, I, I told you, he's not going to be able to do it oh, against the, the Patriots. <laughs> and it's, it's so frustrating and funny to be so right yes. and, and absolutely wrong. In the end of the day, I was wrong because he, you know, he was an RB2, scored 13.8 fantasy points and half point. Um, so it was super garbage, man, but this week, against super garbage, <laughs> super garbage, man, 
Um, That's a new fantasy football superhero. It's not a great matchup this week against the New England Patriots. No, that's who they – Or, I'm sorry, the, the Indianapolis Colts. Still bad. Uh, they're top six against the uh, running back position. But opportunity is so much more important than talent at the running back position. And if you're going to get the opportunity, you're going to score points, even if it comes in garbage at the end of the game. So I'm going to say this is a small fire. So last week it was – the snap share did go to Dare, but in terms of opportunity, Reichwell Armstead had eight and Dare had 11. Uh, I think that this is probably a smoke – situation um for a week 18 waiver play it's certainly not the worst but we're going to jump into the waivers here in just a moment and I think that there's better opportunities so uh, compared to the waiver guys that we're going to talk about I'll say it's smoke he could come through but no I'm, I'm locking it I'm locking it it's it's just smoke overall you know I you you convinced me I looked at the usage he had 60 percent of the running back rush attempts, and 50% of the running back targets. That is not the uh, – I say opportunity matters more than talent, and that's true, but the opportunity, 60% and 50%, that's not the opportunity you want in a tough matchup. I, I'm, On a I'm, bad team. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, smoke. There, That was it. That was where there's smoke. There's fire presented by Traeger Grills. Grilling season never ends with Traeger. Go to Traeger.com slash footballers. News and notes from around the league. All right. We're going to take a look at the playoff scenarios because this matters. This matters a ton going into the final week of the season because there are teams that have nothing to play for, like the Green Bay Packers. They are the number one seed in the NFC. They are 13-3. and three. They have clinched. They cannot lose the bye week. This is why we don't want people to play their championships in the final week of the season. And and we're here for you. We're going to give you all the waivers, all the start sits, all, everything this whole week because we want week 18ers to win the championship too. But try to fix it going forward because here's the perfect example. The Packers are doing what is probably the worst thing possible. What, what gets brought up as the worst thing is this. You got there with the Packers. You got there on the back of your stack of Aaron Rodgers and Deont uh, and and uh, Devontae Adams, and right. and then they sit their starters in the final week, and you have to pivot in your championship game to to someone else. But the reality is here, it could be even worse. Well, the question is, do you have to pivot? Because uh, Matt Lafleur, coach of the Green Bay Packers, has said we're going to play our guys. We're going to approach it like any other game. That means you have to start them. Do you? I mean, <laughs> this is week 18. That's, that's the point. Do you? Can you? He says they're going to play their game and they're going to approach it like any other game. Now, if they do that, of course. There's no way that Aaron Rodgers with a broken toe in a game that means nothing, there is no way he plays a whole game. What about Devontae Adams? I think there's no way that Devontae Adams plays a whole game. They shouldn't play any of the game. I, I mean, other than getting, like, the start. Like, if they've got streaks or something, give them the start, let them play a quarter, and then pull them. I think there is something to be said for just the, the, the routine, the habitual nature of human beings of prepare for this game mentally, go through the week of practice, uh, warm up as usual, do everything, and then go out. Just like it's like a preseason game. Go out there and handle two, maybe three drives, mm -hmm. and then shut them down. That's but, that's fair. And if that happens, it is a massacre for fantasy managers yes. who started Aaron Jones, started A.J. Dillon, started Devontae Adams, started Aaron Rodgers. I feel like if I am in the championship and I have Devontae Adams, oh, man. I have to start Devontae Adams. I doubt that you have a good enough option as, you know, if, if you're going – to your fourth wide receiver to actually bench Devonte Adams, but the reality is, if they do what you just described, then any wide receiver is better than playing Devonte Adams. Yeah, so I'm just projecting here after years of uh, following the NFL, years of being a fantasy football player. I don't know what for sure that they will do. They're saying they're going to play their guys. I find that very difficult to believe, especially when your quarterback 
has been playing on a broken toe. The Eagles, the Eagles have their, they've clinched the playoffs. They cannot win their division. They are nine and seven. They have had a little bit of a COVID outbreak here. Dallas Goddard, Boston Scott, Jordan Howard, uh, Kelsey, Fletcher Cox, they've all been added to the COVID list. Now with the new rules, they of course could make it back in time uh, for their Saturday game with the Cowboys. But do they actually play? I do not know. <laughs> when I heard about the, the – this, this is called the I don't know section of the right. show. Well, this is – Providing this, info. We want you to be aware of the things – that you also don't know. Um, we're, we're wanting to illuminate and shine a light on the gaps of knowledge's possible existence. We have no idea. When Boston Scott and Jordan Howard were added to the COVID list, when I found that out, I was like, I'm not too worried. The new COVID protocols, even if unvaxxed players are back the same week that they're testing positive. Um, but the combination of the fact that they're not playing for anything with kind of guys struggling with, you know, through an illness – do you really force Boston Scott back? Right. And say get in here and play, you know, for nothing. on a small gas tank for nothing or or rest up. So fun week 18. So those are the two most difficult teams and then these are the teams to monitor because these teams have been eliminated. They look it's a it's a divisional weekend. That is so, so great. So everybody is playing against the di a divisional rival. Maybe they're trying to play spoiler, they're trying to be the Grinch. But these are the teams that you need to be following the news all week, seeing if players are going to play. And it's a lot of it's going to be a word vomit because it's a bunch of team names. But just listen up: Broncos, Browns, Dolphins, Jaguars, Jets, and Texans. That's your AFC teams that have nothing to gain. They cannot uh, make the playoffs. They're eliminated. In the NFC, you have the Bears, Falcons, Giants, Lions, Panthers, Seahawks, Vikings, and Washington. Now, if you did not hear a team listed in there, that is because they are fighting for playoff seeding, possibly a division title, possibly just a win and get in situation. We have a, a few very interesting situations like that, like the uh, the Chargers and the Raiders. Oh, that's fun. They are head to head. It's a playoff game. Mono e mono. Winner goes to the playoffs. Yeah, I mean this is a this is a legitimate playoff game that is not only you know. Winner goes on, loser goes home, but this is a division rivalry for the playoffs. This is going to be an exciting, fun game. Um, all those other teams you mentioned that are eliminated already, uh, because they are playing divisional matchups, I think they're going to play and play hard. Here's what you need to pay attention to, and we'll bring this to light this week. They will not put hurt players out there. This is where you have a lot of times at the very end of the year when – You've got nothing to play for. Someone that's nicked up, they'll just put them on the IR, count yeah. the season done. And the, so the name that immediately comes to my mind is Antonio Gibson for Washington. Sure. They are eliminated. Now, Gibson did miss the game because he was on the COVID list, but he was also banged, banged up and missing practice time. He's got the toe situation. He has a hip situation. Let the guy get healthy. I can't imagine that he plays this weekend, and Jarrett Patterson – he he played well in replacement. Let's see what he's got. Let's go two games in a row here with Patterson and see what he can do. Uh, so we'll cover a lot of this stuff for the rest of the week, talking about motivations, but that's kind of just a lay of the land. In other news, Coach Sean McVay of the Rams, he said that he believes Cam Akers will make his season debut against the 49ers. Ooh, baby, yeah, go Cam. I still have full confidence in Sony Michelle as a – Fantasy play, which one million percent. The Rams are still playing for the division because if the Rams lose and the Cardinals win, Cardinals will take the division. Cam Akers is going to get maximum thirty percent of the right. usage in this backfield. And that would shock me. That would shock me as yeah. well. That's I mean, I I think he's going to come out there, touch the ball four or five times. You know, six or seven at the most. Like I do not think he's going to be super involved, but it is so. Awesome yes, to see is. when Cam Akers tore his Achilles, which is a death knell at the running back position. I mean, you and I both, we we presumed that your career was over. We shed over. some fantasy tears for Cam Akers and what could have been. And he is back. He's so young, too. We'll that's, that's what's great. So hopefully he goes out there, stays healthy, plays well, and uh, maybe deep into the playoffs you'll see more Cam. The Raiders are anticipating and hoping – that Darren Waller can return in Week 18 
The matchup is against the Chargers. That's a matchup that you love your fantasy tight ends. Uh, he, he's in. gonna play. And if Darren Waller plays and you're still playing uh fantasy football and you survive without Darren Waller, this is your time. He's the, I'm I'm very confident he's gonna play. He was on track to play last week, but then he had the very, very late COVID announcement that kind of pushed him uh, it, it was too close to the Sunday game to be able to play. So an extra week of health combined with the importance of this game. Uh, I mean, it obviously he hasn't played in a while. It's possible he's not there, but I would be looking at Darren Waller at this point in the week as a player that will be active. Buccaneers running back situation. There's a lot going on. Ronald Jones, who hurt his ankle, unfortunately, in the matchup against the Jets. He is having an MRI. We don't have further information on the extent of the injury. Keyshawn Vaughn, who should have been the next man up, he suffered a rib injury in the same game, and that left <laughs> Le'Veon Bell. Do we have the bell? The old uh, – Oh, there that's not even – that's not the one I want. Oh, that was the one I want. I want the tuba. Give me oh. the – find the tuba and play that when we can. Le'Veon Bell is, quote, the only healthy running back currently for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers headed into week 18 that won't be how it is um it won't Sunday. no because you're going I mean you can't go into a game with Lev Bell's your only healthy running back so you're going to find out about Keyshawn Vaughn's or Ronald Jones health by way of their transactions so we'll we'll tell you what running backs they're signing to their practice squad or bringing in to work out you know if, if all of a sudden you see that they're bringing in two or three guys to work out which we'll find out probably today or tomorrow then we know that it's going to be Lev Bell plus someone off the street. Um, if they're not bringing anybody to work out, then they're not too worried about Keyshawn Vaughn and or Ronald Jones. I can't find the tuba. There, oh, there it is. I heard that when Le'Veon Bell was getting some handoffs this past weekend. What was that all about? Well, Le'Veon Bell is back, and he's going to be in the waiver part of the show. Uh, for the Giants, Mike Glennon will be out. Jake Fromm. Jake Fromm will be starting, and players removed from the COVID list, Julio Jones and Josh Reynolds. Uh, we want to thank our sponsors, though, before we move into the waiver wire. Jason, who you got? Oh, dude, oh, I, got, I know who you got. I got Hello, Hello Fresh. Fresh. Uh, we love Hello Fresh. You get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You can say goodbye to stupid grocery stores, goodbye to oh, dude, recipe lists. and Look, if you run a grocery store, okay, that's fine, but I, I don't like your place of business, and I never want to go there again. Right. You want to stand in a big checkout line after no, walking all not. over the store to find your stuff and then not having it pre-portioned? You want to self-check out? No, I don't want to No, do I don't want to check me out, man. <laughs> Bag my groceries. <laughs> But HelloFresh, they're taking care of you. They're going to give you great recipes. They're different all the time. I mean, it's fun to – my wife and I, we cook these meals together. Uh, we have a good time, a great meal. You you get it 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality. You save on average over $65 per month when you order HelloFresh instead of grocery shopping, and that's more money to put towards those other 2022 goals they offer 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, including veggie, calorie smart, family friendly, gourmet, vegetarian, whatever whatever you want, they have food for you. HelloFresh is awesome and easy. Go to HelloFresh.com slash footballer16. Use the code footballer16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Again, that's HelloFresh.com slash footballer16. Use the code FOOTBALLER16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. And champions, now is your time. FantasyChamps.com, that's where you go to get your champ gear. The champ gear that your league deserves. And right now, you can buy a championship trophy or a belt for your league. Be a, a good commish, just a good Samaritan for your league. Screw that. Buy it for yourself, man. If you're the champ, go buy yourself. Don't say this is for the league. Buy it for yourself. I'm saying you can buy the league a trophy and then use promo code free ring and get a free championship ring for yourself. I know for a fact that you just ordered stuff from fantasychamps.com And I know for a fact that you ordered stuff from fantasychamps.com. Oh, why is that? Because we are champs. We're champions. And champs are going to champ. Mm. We got those rings in the mail. We got the uh, the we ring got, cases, the display boxes. We went astroturf. Yeah, 
got to you got to change it up. Got to change it up. Get a fresh look for that championship ring. Go to fan, uh, fantasychamps.com. You put the trophy or the belt in the cart, then add your ring. Use the promo code free ring and that $59 ring will reduce to $0 just like that. Waiver time. Put me in, coach. All right, the wide receiver position. We talked about Braxton Berrios. He is widely available. Uh, he's got the matchup against Tampa Bay. Zay Jones coming off a career game, sitting on my and Jason fantasy bench. Yes, yes he was. <laughs> <laughs> but 10 targets turned into 8 for 120. Now, the 8 for 120, I will admit, that surprised even me as the supporter of Zay Jones, but he has been trending in a very positive direction over the last month or so. You've seen him. The The snaps have been rising. Uh, he he was the player that took over for, for Henry Ruggs when Ruggs was kicked off of the team. Now, that turned into snaps for Zay Jones. It didn't turn into a lot of opportunities, but this past month, seven targets, nine, eight, ten that opportunity has started to appear. And, and, and it, here's the thing you might not know about Zay Jones is that he's actually a really good football player. He is an athletic He was freak. one of those guys. You liked him a lot. Am I remembering that I, correct? I, I did like him a lot. I, I didn't like him for – it was weird because he was kind of this – And he was a, he was a second-round pick. He was a – he projected to be a PPR type of player, but his athletic profile was like a down-the-field – you know, he's 91st percentile athlete – so this is no scrub that is just, you know, off the street and, uh, you know, a bum. He's certainly in play to pick up and start. I will say this, though. If Darren Waller is back, yeah, and I, I just agree. said that I, you know, I, I think there is a really strong possibility he's back, I would not play Zay Jones with Darren Waller back because that is a lot of targets. You, you presume 10, 12 targets that are going to come out of the – pockets of Renfro and Zay Jones and, and go towards Darren Waller. It is the Sunday night game, so if you're going to roll with Zay Jones, hoping that Waller is out, better be prepared. Gabe Davis of the Buffalo Bills, he's taken on the Jets. Now, it was a game to forget for the Buffalo Bills passing attack this past week, but it was in the snow. Control, alt, delete, remove that, and Gabe Davis is on the field a ton. He's He is interesting this week. And the Bills do have something to play for. Yeah, but he he might be my number one pickup. Do Gabe we, is okay. Yeah, do we know anything on the status of Emmanuel Sanders? He's the real uh, question mark to me. Um, Gabe Davis has looked just awesome. I mean, he's really been a good football player. He just hasn't had the opportunity once they signed Emmanuel Sanders. Long term, I love him. Um, so uh, that's right, Emmanuel Sanders. It was a knee injury that held him out of the game. So if Sanders we'll is out, then I really like the matchup and the talent and the offense. I like everything about Gabriel Davis in this matchup, and he's he's probably my number one wide receiver pickup because both you know it's like the top three guys: Braxton Berrios, Zay Jones, Gabriel Davis. They're all contingent on well is. Is Jamison Crowder, is sure. Darren Waller, is Emmanuel Sanders there or not there? Um, but I like the upside, the the deep ability, the touchdown volume that can come with Gabriel Davis over the other two. If you don't want upside and you just <laughs> want a floor, I mean, the floor and the ceiling of this player, you can't even wedge a, like, uh, you can't even get a, a, a layer of peanut butter in between the two of these things because they are just – they are, in fact, it's the same picture, mm -hmm. the floor and the ceiling. But Laquan Treadwell is out there for everyone to pick up from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Six for 87 this past week, and that's six straight weeks of at least four for 50. The floor is there. The f so if you just need some points, sometimes you do. Sometimes you just need some points, especially in this wacky week where – with the combination of COVID, combination of injuries, players, uh, with teams with motivations to shut players down. Especially in a full PPR. Just pay PPR. attention to him. Uh, I, I had been, you know, Andy's been, if you if you don't stick around to the end of Fridays, we have been building a DraftKings lineup. Which and, you have missed out on the wheel of shame oh, if that, you've done that. That segment's been uh, a delight, but... Um, 
Andy, like three or four weeks in a row, was just getting the super cheap Laquan Treadwell in there because full PPR, you know you've got 10 points. And I, I love that. If you look at the last five games played, he's on pace for 80 receptions and 1,100 yards. He's really been a, a valuable guy playing 88% of the snaps. And I didn't want to go his direction in DFS this last week because of the Patriots, but he still had a good game. The against floor him. was still there. Cedric Wilson from the Dallas Cowboys. He will be filling in because, unfortunately, Michael Gallup tore his ACL. Six for 35 with a touchdown this past week. Uh, it's a little bit of a desperate play. I'd prefer Treadwell over him, but he is interesting. And then, do we mention any of these other guys, yes. Jason? Are you, okay, you pick your favorite. Wesselton. You want to talk about Antoine Wesley? Antoine Wesley, uh, a guy I threw in my DraftKings lineup this you last did. week, came through with two touchdowns. Um, he is the replacement he's uh, he's large he is he is very large six um, four yeah six four 206 pounds um Antoine Wesley is a wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals who is playing in the spot of DeAndre Hopkins um he is getting a lot of opportunity and if you look at the the history between these players Kyler and Antoine Wesley knew each other from college I think they lived together at one point like they this is a guy who's coming in and has been given what seems an inappropriate amount of play. Like, we didn't know who Antoine Wesley it was when he first came in for DeAndre Hopkins, and we're Arizona Cardinals, you know, hometown fans. Um, the more I've looked into him and, and seen him play, he's been good. And if you remember, um, he had a bomb touchdown that wasn't, right? He was Because yeah, he, he didn't get the second foot down. He didn't get the second foot down a couple weeks ago. But his opportunities have definitely been there. He is a big red zone target. Um, and against Seattle uh, in the final week, I mean, I'm, I'm not, you know, banging the drum for you must start Antoine Wesley, but if you are uh, scratching and clawing and there's not a lot on your waivers, he's probably there. He's definitely there. He's available in 100% of leagues. And I'll throw out Marquez Callaway of the Saints, the preseason superstar who didn't actually turn into the superstar that we had hoped for. But he has the matchup against the Atlanta Falcons. That's delightful. He was heavily featured with 10 targets. That makes nine-plus targets in two of the past three games. So he's he's interesting because of the matchup. Yeah, and if, if Traquan Smith um, misses this week, Callaway becomes a, a, a really good play. Also, uh, Dynasty Stash, Christian Wilkerson of the New England Patriots was activated because – Nikhil Harry was a healthy scratch. That's because Nikhil Harry's not good. Ooh. And in, in his first opportunity, um, he gets in and plays 83% of the snaps, gets eight targets, four for 42, two touchdowns, including a missed, uh, It was a, I think it was like a, another 40-yard touchdown that was in and out of his hands. So he could have had a, an absolute monster game, Christian Wilkerson, Christian with a K. Yeah. You're looking for him in your dynasty waivers. Uh, honestly, the truth is absolute long shot. But, I mean, there was a time where uh, we would have said the same exact thing about Jacoby Myers, who was an undrafted free agent. And now Jacoby Myers is like one of their dudes. At the running back position, the main pickup for me of the week, he's only available in half of leagues, but you have to make sure and look for him. It's Ramondre Stevenson, who is number one, He's good. He is a good running back against Jacksonville, 19 for 107 and 2, mostly because they were destroying the the Jaguars. But Damian Harris, who had already started to put up a big game, kind of retweaked the hamstring, monitor his situation. But Damian Harris could be out this week, and Ramondre Stevenson would be the last man standing. And you could probably play Ramondre Stevenson either way. I mean, obviously sure. his upside is – way different if Damian Harris is out he becomes a great play but I think Ramondre has been really really valuable over the last seven years the rookie running backs with multiple games of 100 plus and two touchdowns the list is Todd Gurley Ezekiel Elliott Josh Jacobs Jonathan Taylor and Ramondre Stevenson there's only five he That's has pretty talent. wild um he would easily be the number one pickup for me but he might not be there sure um the next pickup for me if if Ramondre is not there might sound gross. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, it's week 18. It's week 18. It's what this you is deserve. We, you're living in the dumpster already. So <laughs> I love garbage. And, and the best garbage out there, 
is sexy Rex. Oh yeah, you know him about this life. Rex Burkhead. Um, look, week seventeen, he got the volume sixteen for forty seven, and this is the most important part: six targets, six receptions for thirty thirty two yards. Um, the fact that I did not cut up Rod Stewart here to just play. I didn't know that Rex Burkett was going to be your number two guy, or I would have done that. I'm a little disappointed in myself. I apologize, America. Yeah, the Foot Clan's uh, also disappointed in If you, you want my body, <laughs> and you take a taxi, come on, start Rex Burkett. <laughs> oh, it just kept going. Yeah, I apologize. <laughs> For nothing. nothing. Yeah, good, good. All right, yeah, I'm, I'm in on that Rex Burkhead. The volume should be solid. It's been there for the last month. Uh, Jarrett Patterson kind of mentioned him in passing of he was the replacement for Gibson. 12 uh, carries on the ground, 57 rushing yards with a tutty, five targets. He's interesting. Do you call your shot? Like, let me put it this way. If, if I knew that if they said today or before waivers run, Antonio Gibson, we're putting him on the IR. We're just going to sure. help him get healthy. Easily, Jarrett Patterson is my number one pickup. Uh, the matchup against the New York Giants is so much better than Rex Burkett against Tennessee um, or even, uh, you know, the, the matchup against Miami for Ramondre Stevenson. Jarrett Patterson would be a smash play. I think he would be – because he's actually really good. He, yes, he reminds he is, me he's a, good runner. a lot of what we saw in Khalil Herbert, um, a guy who, when given the opportunity, he is talented enough to really – make an impact on fantasy and so you know we said earlier these are the type of teams that are out they have nothing to play for the injured guys they shelf and so if you want to call your I don't have any problem calling my shot making my number one priority Jarrett Patterson I would because here's the thing Rex Burkett still going to be out there later in the week sure I would call the shot I at this point I would fully project that Gibson will sit and Patterson will play that could look foolish by the time you're hearing this podcast, but that's how I see it. We talked about Dari Gumbawale. He's at least sort of interesting against the Colts. For Philadelphia, we don't know exactly what to do because, as we said, Boston Scott, who was the two-touchdown hero of this past week, he was put on the COVID list. The Eagles have nothing to play for. Is this a week that they put Kenneth Gainwell out there their rookie running back who has passing game chops as well, and they just feature him because there is nothing to play for. That is something that could happen. Pay attention to the news. It could be, but I still think Boston Scott, I mean, their main guy, they're already getting healthy. It's not like they're sitting there going, we need Boston Scott healthy for the playoffs. What they're saying is we need Miles Sanders healthy for the playoffs, sure. and they're going to get him healthy. So I, I think Boston Scott is still probably a fine play. I know he just went on the COVID list. Um, if he plays, then yes, I, I would agree with that. The question is just, will he? And you need to be prepared for that scenario. And then Le'Veon Bell, he's healthy. That's what we can say about him. Uh, Keyshawn Vaughn could be back from with the bruised ribs. Not doing it. No way. You're not going to do either? Not doing No. Uh, the matchup against uh, Carolina this week is difficult. And if you're telling me I get old, washed Lev Bell, even by himself against the Carolina front four, no, I'm not not doing that. Okay, well, what if Keyshawn Vaughn is back? You gonna pick up Vaughn and play him? Vaughn has never done anything enough to to push my confidence level to where in the championship I would take the known volume of a Dare or a Rex Burkhead over the question marks of. I mean, I'll be rooting like heck for Keyshawn Vaughn because well, I liked him coming out of college. He's on right. a dynasty roster. Yeah. But I, I don't think I could throw him in there in championship week. All right. The tight end position, it's very bleak this week. I tried to find players who uh, could be in good matchups this week. Foster Moreau is a name to bring up for the, the Las Vegas Raiders. But Darren Waller could be back, and then Moreau is a – you do not play him. Uh, Austin Hooper of the Cleveland Browns. He will be taking on the Bengals, which has been a, mm -hmm. a, a pretty solid matchup for tight ends. And then the Muth. Oh. The Muth is a, is still available in about half of leagues. He's on the road against Baltimore. The, the Steelers are playing. To, they, the Steelers have to win just to have the chance to get into the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. So he's he had interesting. six targets this last week. 
Um, the Muth is Luth. He's oh. my number. He would definitely be the pickup. Um, you could throw Tyler Conklin out there as well, I think. Okay. Uh, as a desperation guy with Adam Thielen gone, um, it's – you know they they should they should have Kirk Cousins back and uh, Pittsburgh fans. We hear you on the television when the Muth gets the ball. It's lovely Muth, but Foot Clan. We need you to infiltrate the Steelers yes. stadium, and you need to comp- complete it. It yes. needs to be the Muth. It's loose. Absolutely. And every time the ball goes his direction, I don't care if he catches the Muth, ball. Muth, Muth. <laughs> That's the call. <laughs> That's a, you start the same. It's you know that you're already going muth when he catches it. Just go muth after that. You'll have a good time. Yes. Everyone will celebrate. Um, oh, one other one other name to bring up. I, I'm thinking of it because of Tyler Conklin. Um, I don't know his availability. Maybe he's rostered in uh, most places. But KJ Osborne um, is a is a really good pickup to me at wide receiver. As long as Thielen is out. Thielen is out. What did he? Did they shut him down? Yeah, I think I think they. Sh- he had surgery, didn't he? So, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Thielen yeah, yeah. is gone. Okay. KJ yeah. Osborne is a great play, and Kirk Cousins uh, will be available. So, I mean, he's. I would take him over all those other wide receivers. I, we. I can mentioned. agree with that at the at the defense position. The Colts are widely available. They are playing the Jacksonville Jaguars, and if you haven't heard, they stink. Oh yeah, no, I heard that. I heard. You heard? That. I heard it, that uh, all season. It's it's like going around. It's making the rounds. The people are talking. I've heard a bunch of questions of what do you do with Trevor Lawrence's rookie season? You throw it in the garbage and hope that it was the product of Urban Meyer. I don't think so, man. I I'm not throwing it in the garbage. I'm I'm t- I'm telling you, if he's on your dynasty team, that's what I would be doing. So okay, let's have that discussion. You drafted him in a dino league. Mm-hmm. Are you really pulling the ripcord? If I can trade him on the promise of a, you know, if 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 I could trade him for a one, oh, I would do it for a first round. And you're talking a single quarterback. Yes, league, of single. Course. Yes, of course. So in a single quarterback league, you would just take you'd take. I would first. cut. I would cut the ripcord and take first and get Woo! out. You you had one of the worst rookies. I I saw nothing. I saw nothing to make me believe like. I mean, here's the thing. He has ultimate draft capital. He will get the opportunity and the shot for years, so he could right. certainly develop. Um, I, I just we've seen plenty of highly drafted guys bust, and usually when they bust, they have a really bad rookie season because all of their seasons are really bad. And we saw one of those things happen. Who do you prefer in a dynasty league right now, Trevor Lawrence or Justin Fields? Fields. Who do you prefer, Trevor Lawrence or Trey Lance? Lance. No, oh, okay. I'm just, you know. Yeah, I would. I would trade Fields for both of those guys, or or uh, Lawrence for both those guys. I'm just flexing. Oh, I'm I just. Gotcha. I'm I just gotcha. flexing that I. I took Lance over Lawrence, and I got some heat in our Dino draft when I made that decision. Uh, so the Colts against the stinky, stinky Jacksonville Jaguars. Kansas City gets to take on Denver, which. If that is Drew Locke, Mr. Irresponsible himself yet again, then That's the Chiefs are in play. Great matchup. Green Bay against Detroit, that one is that one is iffy to me because of the fact that they could bench whoever whoever they want to in the game because the game does not matter. Yeah, and you're at talking all. Tim Boyle revenge game. Oh, so oh god. You gotta get out of the way and of that kind it, of and he's and he's wealthy now. Oh man. He got all the money that the Green Bay Packers would not give him and no one else in the league would give him but the Detroit Lions did. Mhm. And now he's coming, he's going to spend it uh all on on the Green Bay Packers taking him down. <laughs> I mean the the nice thing is Detroit has been playing for anything all year and they know how to play for nothing. Um, sure. So I I would agree with you. I I do think the Packers are a playable defense, but I would certainly play the Colts or the Chiefs over them and my number one yep. defense that is certainly out there definitely available um in most leagues and I would I think I would play them over all of these would be the Washington football team against Jake Fromm the Giants have been a a comic <laughs> book show of hilarity <laughs> they are inept their offense is as bad as anything you've ever seen and you're forgiving it because of quarterback injuries but while you forgive it take advantage of it and play defenses against them oh we did just get a little bit of breaking news i'm not going to hit the button for it 
The Washington football team will announce and unveil its new name and logo on February 2nd. Oh, fantastic. I'm so sick of saying the football team. They, they could be the football team. You oh, know, that's one won't. of the options. Yeah, I know. They won't do that. I, I don't have a problem with it. But anyways, back to the Giants. Uh, last three weeks, <laughs> defenses against the Giants. The Dallas Cowboys were number three overall with 16 points. The Philadelphia Eagles were number four overall with 16 points. And the Chicago Bears were number one overall with 21 points. Mm -hmm. The Washington football team is probably the strongest streamer of the week yeah. at the DST position. Speaking of streamers. Full stream ahead. All right, we've got our quarterback streamers. I'll kick us off here. I'm going with Taysom Hill against Atlanta. Taysom Hill, uh, he didn't have a phenomenal fantasy production this last week in a tough matchup, but he was he was actually he was okay. Um, he still rushed enough. Uh, the Saints still have a chance to get in the playoffs. Um, you know, the Falcons have allowed the seventh most rushing yards in the NFL. We've seen Taysom Hill and mobile quarterbacks do good against Atlanta. I would be happy to have Taysom Hill in my championship game. It's Trey Lance. Yeah, I, I mean, is he, we all know. You know what it is, Glenn? You know what I'm gonna say? Thank you, computer. It's Trey Lance. Yeah, uh, that's now, a wrap. Now, presuming that uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, who is currently waiting for the ligament to reattach in his thumb, any minute now, it's just you know, it's he one of those play. things. He, he, hey guys, he could play this week. He could. He could definitely play this week, as long as the ligament. And his thumb reattaches to the bone. It's coming. He's just got to think any, real hard. Just, just sit, just meditate, crisscross applesauce. Really think about that ligament reattaching. Uh, but Lance, Lance had a a very good second half. It was iffy in the first half. I totally get it. It's the dude's second start, but he runs a lot. He was airing the ball out. He hit Debo on the deep strike. That's. Everything is there for Trey Lance, a unbelievably athletic quarterback who likes to run the football, so you have that cheat code, and he's he has a cannon for an arm, and he's surrounded by elite playmakers. It's yeah. all there. So I like him a lot. I would play him as a top-10 quarterback this week. I mean, uh, <laughs> Here's the question, Jason. Trey Lance or Aaron Rodgers? Trey Lance. Okay. I, I don't want the chance of one quarter of Aaron Rodgers. You know, it's like if they both play a full game, Aaron Rodgers will outscore Trey Lance sure. by a little bit. He'll score five, four or five more points than Trey Lance. But if Aaron Rodgers goes out and plays a quarter and Trey Lance plays a whole game, Trey Lance outscores Aaron Rodgers by 20. So it's a, I'm not, you know, that if you've got that kind of an option, yeah, I would go Trey Lance. That's going to do it for today's show. Before we close out, Reminder, we want to thank these sponsors, Traeger Grills. Grilling season never ends with Traeger. You keep the wood-fired flavor coming all year long with Traeger. Six-in-one versatility means you can cook everything from low and slow barbecue to winter classics like roasts, braises, baked goods. It's, it's wild, man. The stuff that you can cook out there, smoke it up on the Traeger. Everything. You, it's literally everything. It's a grill. It's an oven. It's, it's fantastic. Whatever you want it to be, and it's delicious. It's delicious, and you monitor it from your your phone with when you have a, a Traeger that has the Wi-Fi or technology. It's never been easier to grill. So make it a wood-fired winter with Traeger. Go to Traeger.com slash footballers. And we want to thank Pristine Auction for sponsoring our show for so long. They are great. Um, here are a couple of auctions you can find right now today on Pristine Auction. Right now I see a David Montgomery signed jersey. It is currently at $47. It ends tonight. How about an Elijah Mitchell signed jersey? Man. Current auction bid price. I'm looking at it now. $23.10. It ends tonight. All you got to do, go to Pristine Auction. Dot com Make a completely free account. When you register, that's when you use the code BALLERS. You'll get a $10 credit and then bid on whatever you want for whatever price you want. And you don't spend anything unless you win it at that price. So, boom, bam. Thank you, man. Where is Elijah Mitchell being drafted next year? Well, that's going to be so dependent upon their draft and free agency. If if it goes like if, – if the offseason goes where they no, bring back the same you're, guys. You're projecting it all right now. If I'm projecting it all right now, I think he's a third-round pick. 
I think it's the dude. I think, yeah, I, think he's- I think he'll be the dude, and he's going to be awesome next year. That's going to do it for today's show. Ladies and gentlemen, get those waiver claims locked in there. We will be joining you tomorrow because we aren't going away for the rest of the week. week because we love the degenerates. We mm. are you. We love you. And enjoy those titles, everyone. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.